Marietta Mahani. And this week's muscle conditioning tip is using a Swiss ball, using some weights to train both the upper body and lower body. But the weights are obviously for your hands. So what we're going to be doing is what's called a bench fly or um, a fly action. So bench press, normally it's hands close together, fly, you open out. So it's a bigger range of motion. Now, one of the main reasons why I like using the ball in comparison to using a bench is that my scapula has the ability to move because it's not locked in place because I'm lying on a hard flat surface. Because the ball's rounded, actually my scapula tends to be off the ball and so I can get much better range of motion with my arms and also it feels comfortable on my shoulders at the same time. I'm not restricted by the fact that my scapula can't move on a hard flat surface. So, to begin with this exercise, make sure that you have a non-slip mat. It's really important and because you want to keep the ball and the feet stable still as when you're doing this exercise because it's going to challenge your balance as well. The other thing is you want to make sure you have a non-burst ball. So an anti-burst ball, they're good quality, they tend to be thicker skin. You know, the ones that I use are from Australian Barbell Company and they have excellent balls. So if you're looking for a ball company that's going to provide you with a ball that's safe, Australian Barbell Company uh, is who we I usually recommend or AOK. -okay. So either one of those two companies. So, starting off by sitting towards the back of your mat because you're going to walk yourself forwards. So, sitting towards the back of your mat, walk yourself forwards so that both your feet and the ball on, both your feet and your head and the ball are on the mat. Okay, so your head's on the top of the ball and the ball's on top of the mat, then you get your feet out. You'll notice that most of my body is now away and off from the ball. So, if I'm in this position, Okay, I won't feel very comfortable with my neck and my body's too supported. Okay, I want a little bit less support because I want these muscles, hamstrings, glutes and lower back to actually fire up. So starting with your feet wide apart, because that's really important that you start with a wide base of support, hands above your chest, not above your face, above your chest, open out and then come back up again. So as you open out, check that your elbows are slightly bent as you drop the weights towards the floor and just open the arms out as far as it feels comfortable on your shoulders. Now you can see here how I can get some really good range of motion because I'm not restricted by the bench. So I'm just going to turn around so you can see that movement with a little bit more clarity. So I'm just going to move around this way. So you can see from above here, come forwards, arms above the chest, Open out, squeeze them together. Open out, squeeze them together. So bring your hands together. I like to bring the thumbs together rather than the palms, but it's up to a preference. For me, it's a shoulder preference. So I prefer to bring my dumbbells this way. Notice how my elbows are still slightly bent as I go down. Yep, so breathe in, breathe out. Now, if you want to make the exercise more challenging, you're a group fitness instructor perhaps, or a home fitness enthusiast and you really want to work a bit harder, then what you do with your feet makes all the difference in the world. So, walking forwards again. Um, so, instead of feet wide apart, bring your feet closer together. And you can bring your feet closer together just a little bit, or, as I've done, is I've actually brought my knees together and my feet together. So now my inner thighs are squeezing. It's really challenging because I've got to work so much harder to keep those hips still lifted in the same alignment and still perform this movement pattern. Then you can lift one leg up, whoa, and this becomes much harder. You'll notice that I'm beginning to wobble as I try to reposition my body and find that balance. So for those people who want to feel a little bit more intensity to their midsection, up to their abdominal wall, this is how to go about it. The next one, the next option, is to keep that foot off the floor while still trying to drive the hips up with the opposite leg. You might need to just do four repetitions on one side and then four on the other. Whew, it's challenging. So it's really important that you're lifting your hips up and check that your hands are across your chest. If you want to avoid taking the arms back, this is a very common error, 
lots of people take their arms back when I teach my classes and they have to show them how to get it across their chest. So if you can use a mirror sideways, it's ideal. So excellent workout for the posterior muscles from a stabilization point of view. Great workout for hip top muscles, especially once you start lifting those legs up off the floor. And of course, you've got that other body intensity as well. And that's this week's muscle conditioning tip.